Today I'm going to share this really cool and fascinating story about visible points from the origin. So imagine we had our eye right at the origin here in the plane, and we were looking at all of these lattice points. Then some of them we will be able to see, but some of them will be blocked. So for example, this point 1, 1, we would be able to see from the origin, but the point 2, 2, we would not be able to see because it would be blocked by the point 1, 1. All right, so what other points are points that we'd be able to see? So for example, if we look at the point 2, 3, this would be visible from the origin because there's nothing blocking it as we draw the line segment from the origin to it. However, 2, 4 is an example of a point that's not visible because 1, 2 would be blocking it. And 1, 2 itself actually is visible. So the question we're going to ask today is, if we think about blocking off a section of this as n by n, and look at the points with positive integer coordinates, as n grows, what is the density of the number of points that are visible? Or similarly, the density of the number of points that are invisible. So this is an interesting question that's going to take two things to be able to do. First is to characterize the points that are visible or invisible. Can we talk about what those points are? And then secondly, calculating the probability of actually being visible or invisible. So let's take these steps in order to figure out what the density of visible versus unvisible points are from the origin. Let's start by characterizing points that are invisible and visible from the origin. So I want to start with a motivating example. So we notice that 2, 2 is blocked by 1, 1. So 2, 2 is invisible. And 2, 4 is invisible because it's blocked by 1, 2. So what's happening here is these things are, have components that are multiples of another coordinate whose coordinates are positive integers. So if we had a point PQ over here, and P and Q had some common factor, let's call that common factor D greater than 1, then if we scale each coordinate by D, we'll have a point Q over D, P over D, Q over D, that lies on the line segment from 0, 0 to PQ, because the slope of the line that these two points lie on is the same as the slope of these two. So this point is a point with integer coordinates that blocks the visibility of PQ. So we know for sure that all the points PQ, where P and Q have a common factor, are not visible at all. Okay, so what happens if P and Q do not have a common factor? Well, imagine that such a point was not visible. Then you'd have this point x, y lying on the line segment between these, and x and y have positive integer values. So, as a consequence, by analyzing the slopes from the origin as well, we would get y over x is Q over P. Now the issue here is how will something like this be possible? This is a rational number that because P and Q have no common factors is written in lowest terms. And what we've said here is we can write it as another fraction where the numerator and denominator are positive integers, but these values actually are smaller than the values we started with. That's impossible if we wrote this already in lowest terms to begin with. So we have a complete characterization then of which points are visible and invisible. Here we've shown if the coordinates don't have any common factors, then the point is visible from the origin. You actually see that with some examples like 1, 1 and 2, 3. Um, but if they do have something in common, they're invisible. So we'll write that down and use that to start doing some calculations of probability. Okay, so our points P, Q that are invisible in this part of the lattice plane where all the points have positive coordinates are the points P, Q for which the GCD of P and Q is 1. All right, so let's actually use that to figure out um, what the probability of being invisible is. All right, so... One way to not be invisible is if both of your coordinates have 2 as a common factor, right? So what we can do is eliminate the possibilities of things that have 2 as a common factor. 
as we said, the way we want to do our analysis is look at what happens from here to the point N, N and analyze the density as N goes to infinity. So we'll do that. So the number of total points we have here is M squared. All right, so the fraction of points in this grid that are invisible is going to be one over M squared times the number of points that are invisible of the type that we're looking at, which are the ones that have two as a common factor in both coordinates. So if you look at the X coordinate, the numbers in the X coordinate go from one to N, and exactly half of those are even. Actually, it's going to be the floor of n over 2, depending on whether or not n is even or odd. This is n over 2 rounded down. OK, and since the y coordinate is chosen independent of the x coordinate, the same thing happens with the y coordinate. You get floor of n over 2 possibilities for that. So in the n by n grid, the number of pairs of points where each coordinate is even is this quantity right over here. Okay, so the probability that they're not in this situation, meaning one of them is odd or the other is odd, is one minus this thing right over here. And this, as n goes to infinity, approaches, well, here, this is roughly n squared over four, um, is very close to it. So in the limit, this is going to be one minus one over two squared. Okay. So this number here is looking at an n by n grid, growing it, and telling us the probability that it's not the case that both the coordinates are even. So that eliminates a whole bunch of the invisible points, is the ones in which two is a common factor of both coordinates. Now let's say we wanted to extend this and look at the points in which at least one of the coordinates is not divisible by three. That's another prime. By the same analysis, we're going to have 1 over n squared many points. Um, and the number of points whose first coordinate is a multiple of 3 is the floor of n over 3. The second coordinate, the same thing. And so the chance that one of the coordinates is not a multiple of 3 is 1 minus this thing. And as n goes to infinity, like we analyzed before, this is going to be going to 1 minus 1 over 3 squared. Now, let's think about then what happens when we multiply these two quantities right over here. Here, we've looked at the entire grid, noting things that don't have an even number in both coordinates. Here, we've noted things that don't have a multiple of three in both coordinates. So if you multiply these two things, this will tell us the number of pairs of points that don't have a factor of two in both coordinates, and don't have a factor of three in both coordinates. So the product of these two would tell us the density of points that don't have a factor of two in both coordinates and don't have a factor of three in both coordinates. Another way to think about this, if you multiply these two things, you'd get one, that's the density of the whole thing, minus one over two squared, which is the density of points that have a two as a factor in both coordinates, then minus the ones that have a factor of three in both coordinates, but then adding back the ones that have a factor of six in both coordinates because they've been double counted. So if you continue this pattern looking over all primes, what we get then by taking the products of all of these subsequent probabilities is that the probability we're interested in is one minus one over two squared times one over one minus three squared times one over one minus five squared, et cetera, where we're taking the products one minus one over p squared where over all primes p. So this is the thing that we need to simplify and figure out. Okay, so we figured out that the probability of a point being invisible as we take this grid larger and larger is this number right over here. So we're interested in figuring out what this is. All right, so to take an approach to this, what we're gonna do is actually maybe call this number x. And then we're gonna take the reciprocal of x because if something interesting happens with the reciprocal of x. So one over x, is the product of all overall primes of one over this quantity right over here. Okay, so we can rewrite this quantity right over here. Because p is a positive integer, this thing is gonna be less than one, so we can expand this as a product thinking about it as the sum of a geometric series that's infinite with common ratio of one over p squared. So this is the product over all primes p, 
of the quantity one plus one over p squared plus one over p squared squared, which is one over p to the fourth, plus one over p to the sixth, etc. All right, so now we're expanding this kind of quantity over all possible primes. So what happens? Well, if you think about a generic term in this product, it's going to look like this. You're going to collect a bunch of terms, one from each of these particular um, pieces. And so a term in this entire expansion is going to look something like this. You'll have 1 over p1 for some prime p1 to some exponent n1, well actually 2 times n1, where we're picking the n1 term that appears in this sum. And then you'll have something like p2 to the 2n2, etc., up to 1 over pk to the 2nk, where this is your last piece that you pick from. All right, so when you take the product of this, if you look at what this actually is, this is the square of the reciprocal of some number p1 to the n1 up to pk to the nk. This is the positive integer. And the thing that we know is what's called the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. We know it because we actually made a video on it that you can watch right over here. And it says that every single positive integer factors uniquely into a product of primes up to the arrangement of the primes. So by doing this, since this is a prototypical element of the product, running through all possible primes and all possible things in this expansion, we actually get one over every single positive integer. So this thing can then be represented as the sum over all n in the natural numbers of one over n squared. Again, because we get every single number exactly once on the denominator of an expression like this. Okay, cool. So this is actually what's known as an evaluation of the Raymond zeta function, zeta of two. And classically, this is known to be pi squared over six. And there are a lot of different ways to actually establish this. I'll, stop, I'll give you a link right over here to take a look if you want to um, watch a video on why this is the case. Okay, so then one over x is this quantity right over here. And so the probability that we're interested in, the probability of being invisible, is six over pi squared. That's a pretty cool problem that we don't expect this type of computation at the end here to come out, but it really took two pieces. One is thinking about what it means to be visible or invisible and doing some accounting in order to take that into place. Now, a thing I'll mention is we do have to be a little bit careful with uh, a little bit of the computations that we did. For example, you need to know that the expansion of this actually converges as a product. That's a theory that I'm going to leave alone because this part here is something that's been done quite a bit on a lot of websites dealing with the Raymond state function and also videos on YouTube. And another thing we should be careful of is this analysis of the probability where what we did is we took the box from 1, 1 to nm and then expanded it in each term and then looked at that. There are many other ways to look at probabilities when you're dealing with infinite sets. Um, but this case, this is a kind of a natural thing to do, is take the box from NN and expand out. So that's why we did that. Now, an interesting follow-up question, if you're really curious, is how do you generalize this? Like, we did lines of sight here, but what about parabolas? So let's say you are looking at lines of sight that are curved, so your eye doesn't look straight forward, but instead there's like a bending of light for some reason. And so your lines of sight are not straight lines anymore, but they're parabolas that look like this for various positive values of A. Now, which points are visible and invisible? And as a consequence, what's the probability of being an invisible point? What happens if you change this number two to a general number B that's a positive integer? And those are your lines of sight, what do you get? There's actually interesting answers to these questions um, and if you want to investigate and see what you come up with, write in the comments what curiosities, observations, and things that you actually figure out.
So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, definitely click the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, definitely subscribe to the channel.